there are so many really good storylines throughout the NFL this year. I, I think that Buffalo is a team trying to position themselves to be in, you know, a Super Bowl team. They added Von Miller. They're trying to get better. They're really close already. They got an elite quarterback. This feels like the year of the Buffalo Bills. There are so many young quarterbacks. You got Trey Lance, Zach Wilson, Davis Mills, Justin Fields, Mac Jones, who we believe in, and uh, Kenny Pickett's a young quarterback. He might be the only rookie quarterback to play this year. Trevor Lawrence in Jacksonville, the new head coach, Doug Peterson. Like, the young quarterbacks are a great storyline. Then you got quarterbacks who are trying to prove themselves, who are younger, but they've been in the league for a while. You got Daniel Jones, who didn't get his, you know, fifth year of his rookie contract picked up by the Giants. Then you got Drew Locke in Seattle trying to make a name for himself. Sam Darnold is probably done in Carolina, but Sam Darnold's still out there. Probably going to play week one for Carolina. Got a bunch of quarterbacks on new teams. Carson Wentz is a guy... Trying to prove himself, but also a new quarterback on a new team in a fairly good scenario, throwing to Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson in Washington. Matt Ryan's now on the Colts. Russell Wilson is now in Denver. Deshaun Watson got moved to Cleveland. Like, there was seismic quarterback movement this offseason. By the way, Marcus Mariota, a guy who a lot of people doubt I'm interested in. Marcus Mariota's trying to prove himself as a new quarterback in Atlanta. And then, could any young rookie quarterbacks beside Kenny Pickett play this year. Maybe Desmond Ritter does play in Atlanta. Maybe Matt Corral midseason becomes a starting quarterback in Carolina. That's a fun storyline to follow. Can the New Orleans Saints challenge Tampa for the division in the NFC South? They added Teran Matthew. They brought in uh, a really good new tackle. They brought in Chris Olave at receiver. They've got Jameis Winston back healthy. And they did lose their head coach, uh, Sean Payton, but they got Dennis Allen now as their head coach. He's a great defensive mind. I think the Saints' defense got better all around. I think the Saints have an opportunity here to challenge Tampa. By the way, the Saints have swept Tampa in the regular season three years in a row. It's not like Tampa isn't competitive against, or it's not like New Orleans isn't competitive against Tampa. No, historically, and even last year, they have dominated the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Who the heck is going to win the AFC West? I have no idea. Neither do you. Don't pretend like you know. The L.A. Chargers, the Denver Broncos, uh, Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City, the Vegas Raiders. I mean, this is an incredible division. Derek Carr, Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes, and Justin Herbert. The fact that Derek Carr is the worst quarterback in that division is insane. Derek Carr would be the best quarterback in a lot of other divisions in the NFL. It's unbelievable. Also this year, by the way, is the year of the receiver. There were six receivers taken in the first round, plus a lot of trades this offseason. A.J. Brown, Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, Marquise Hollywood-Brown. I think what happened was people saw the Cincinnati Bengals draft Jamar Chase instead of a really good tackle. And people saw Cincinnati win with good receivers and kind of a, a new different way to win in the NFL and said, oh, receivers are more valuable than ever. And the NFL responded and copied all of them. So we will learn how valuable really is the receiver position in the NFL right now with rule changes and protections on the quarterback, it seems like receivers are at an all-time high. Uh, now, will the bubble burst or not? We will find out. By the way, there, in the NFL draft, there were three defensive ends taken in the top five. The Jaguars drafted Trevon Walker, number one overall. The Lions drafted Aiden Hutchinson, number two overall. And the Giants drafted Kayvon Thibodeau, number five overall. Which rookie defensive end is going to be best this year? I think it's very possible the Jaguars drafted the wrong guy. And, you know, I think Aiden Hutchinson and Kayvon Thibodeau might end up being better than Trevon Walker, who got drafted number one overall and might even be, dare I say, could end up being a disappointment to the Jaguars. I don't like throwing around the word bust. It's too early for that. But, geez, it already feels like this guy might have been overdrafted. And that's crazy to say already. <laughs> like, a year hasn't even started. And I'm still like... I don't know that that was the right pick. That feels weird to me. There is a, this is, I don't know if it's a record or not, but it feels like it has to be a record. There are nine new head coaches in the NFL. The Vikings brought in Kevin O'Connell, a former quarterback and Rams assistant. Miami brought in the 49ers offensive coordinator, Mike McDaniel, my favorite new head coach in the NFL, by the way. He is a madman. I love how he talks. He reminds me of Mike Leach. He's great at giving interesting answers that also don't reveal anything about your football team. Brian Dable is the new head coach of the New York Giants. He's a great offensive mind. 
The Jaguars brought in Doug Peterson, a guy who's won a Super Bowl. They're hoping he can mentor Trevor Lawrence. The Raiders brought in Josh McDaniels and, and really are becoming the Patriots West with Dave Ziegler and Josh McDaniels trying to right the ship after uh, the Gruden, Gruden era didn't really work. And Mike Mayak drafted, you know, five people in the first round in two years that are now all do not appear to have a long term future with the franchise or already off the team. The Broncos brought in Nathaniel Hackett, the former Packers quarterback coach who, you know, guys worked with Aaron Rodgers. Now he gets to work with Russell Wilson. We think that's going to work really well. The Bears had a, a head coach who I respect, but I'm, I'm not sure is the right guy for the job. Matt Eberflus, who great defensive mind. I just wonder, can he connect with and really help the young quarterback, Justin Fields, in Chicago? The Saints brought in Dennis Allen. They kind of got blindsided with Sean Payton stepping down later in the year. Oh my gosh, there's another coach. I didn't, There's actually 10 new head coaches because Bruce Arians stepped down in Tampa. And now you have Todd Bowles as a head coach there in Tampa. Uh, he, he was once head coach of the Jets. He's awesome. The Texans now have uh, Lovey Smith as their head coach. So not, there are not nine new head coaches in the NFL. There are 10. I can't even – uh, that has to be a record. I just would be blown away if that's on an all-time high for new head coaches in the NFL. Is it Tom Brady's final year in Tampa? He got a massive deal to broadcast for Fox. He appears to be looking ahead to the future. Maybe that's just Fox being smart and securing the bag early, securing their guy. I don't know. Could it be Aaron Rodgers' final year? I don't think so. He signed a long-term contract, but we'll see. Uh, who's going to win the NFC East? Certainly not the New York Giants. They are rebuilding. Although I like where the Giants are headed. They, they drafted on the offensive and defensive line. They got a head coach I like. But the reason why the Giants aren't going to win that division is because you don't even know if they have the right quarterback. And no team goes into the year not knowing if their quarterback is good and then wins that division. I just can't get behind that. But Washington, Philly, and Dallas all appear to have a shot to win that division. I think Philly's probably the favorite today, but Carson Wentz is a wild card. Dallas is going to be still pretty good. It's going to be an awesome year. Oh yeah, by the way, who's going to get hurt and throw everything out of whack and defy expectations? I will say it's interesting. I'm not that excited about the New England Patriots. It's the first time in a while that I've been like, eh, maybe this is how people felt about the Patriots with Tom Brady for years. I always loved Tom Brady, so I was interested and would like lean in and was excited. But now Mac Jones is pretty boring. Bill Belichick is, eh, the draft is pretty weird for New England. I, I think I'm finally catching up with the rest of the world, feeling like the Patriots are a very boring franchise that are probably going to be good. But I'm not excited to watch them. Like, uh, week nine, the only noteworthy game for the Patriots really this year is that they play the Colts on the road. It's a Stephon Gilmore revenge game. That'll be fun. But am I the only one who is surprised to feel like the, Col the, the Patriots, excuse me, I'm surprised that the Patriots are not exciting to me. I'm just like, eh, they're weirdly boring, which I've never felt that way once in my entire life about the New England Patriots until this moment. 